Hey everyone, so what does it take to join the ranks of Digital Foundry? Consider this video a bit of bonus material for the holiday break. Alex Batalia joined us this year and initially he showed us what he could offer by producing this detailed technical analysis of one of his favourite PC games, Armour 3. Now, this is very, very, in fact it's super early stuff for Alex here and obviously his editing skills and composition have increased enormously over the last few months. But I actually think that it's a really good analysis and I really want you to check this out. It covers in depth a game we were never likely to look at on the channel and I'm happy to share this video with you today. While a number of genres on the PC platform have undergone extreme change over the last 20 years, Bohemia Interactive has continued producing its uncompromising Armour series in spite of trends. The Armour series has grown with the PC platform in its time and emphasizes all those great points one expects of a classic PC game. Starting with Operation Flashpoint in 2001, the series has been known for simulating combined arms combat to a meticulous level of detail and scope. As we will find out in this video, this attention to breadth and depth is not just limited to the in-game simulation itself, as the game supports partial and total conversions, an extensive map and scripting editor, and in-game options and control menus which would rival your favorite flight simulator or Crow Team production. Today's video explores the engine features, performance characteristics, and graphical options found in Arma 3 in its post-Apex update. So let's dive in! When booting up Armro, one of the first things you are greeted with are the real-time 3D elements in the background behind the UI. Along with being generally attractive 3D scenes, they serve the convenient and dual purpose of letting you gauge your chosen visual settings and performance without having to load up a game save, or, most importantly, without having to restart the game itself. That is right, every single option for controlling the visuals in Armour 3 respond to your tweaking in real time with only the slightest reload of assets, such as for textures being swapped out of memory. When peering into the video options menu, the wide range of tweakable parameters becomes immediately apparent, a number of which have dramatic visual and performance consequences. Starting at the general tab, the game offers predetermined overall quality presets which can be deviated from by tweaking individual parameters. The general tag gives you control over visual options you would find in many other games, but with a few particularities unique to Arma 3. Starting with sampling, this option allows you to increase the internal resolution of the rendering as a dimensional percentage of your chosen output resolution as available under the display tab. Presuming you are gaming at 1920 by 1080, that would mean each axis is increased by 200%, giving an internal resolution of 3840 by 2160. It is generally expensive to tweak, a fact which the game notifies you of with a little throttling icon that appears. Beyond this, you have the industry standard options for shadows, objects, as in geometry, terrain detail, shadow quality, particle quality, and cloud rendering quality. Given the fact that Arma 3 is running on a forward rendered engine, you're also given the somewhat unique control over the amount of dynamic lights and the ability to adjust the quality and use of internally rendered PIP elements, also known as picture in picture. Picture in picture here describes a method of rendering different 3D scenes or camera perspectives out to a texture, which is then mapped subsequently to a geometric surface, thus giving the illusion of planar, spherically wrapped, rear view mirror reflections, or something like a security camera. This technique is often seen in racing games for rear view mirrors, in bathrooms in games like the most recent Hitman, or just for plain old planar water surfaces. In addition to this, you have the ability to change the internal usage of HDR not HDR output, mind you, and you will use this to either reduce banding or save on performance. 
The Water Reflections option changes the internal resolution of screen space reflections as applied to water surfaces or to disable them completely. Next to the aforementioned internal supersampling option, Arma 3 grants you the daunting and deceptively simple power of controlling visibility options. The overall option here controls the range at which the clip plane fog starts relative to the camera frustum, which, when low enough and coupled with high background parallax, allows you to see the eerie fog rotating around your perspective. Object here controls the range at which decorative objects render out, like trees, rocks, and so forth. And the shadows option controls the distance that each shadow map cascade covers, an option which does not necessarily improve the rendering like you may think. Moving into the display tab, you have the option of allowing the game to run in full screen mode, with or without vSync, or in windowed, borderless windowed mode, with then Windows Composite Manager governing triple buffering. Then of course there are the typical resolution options, aspect ratio options for the wide variety of displays the game can support, or for locking the game to a cinematic 21 by 9 should you so choose. The last tab, AANPP, or Anti-Aliasing and Post-Processing, gives you both artistic control over the game's color palette and highlights a unique facet of Arma 3's rendering. Here you have complete control over every single bit of post-processing the game takes advantage of, including bloom, rotational blur, depth of field, a sharpening filter, and various types of screen space ambient occlusions, and lastly, water caustics. From here you can adjust a variety of image manipulation sliders such as brightness, contrast, and saturation. So yes, you can relive that wonderfully visceral desaturated brown mid-2000 Unreal Engine 3 era color scheme should you so wish. The bottom right section is particularly interesting and unique to Arma 3 as you have control here over full screen anti-aliasing, which is in fact just MSAA. So even though I say it is just MSAA, it is interesting to see in a modern game nonetheless, and since Armor 3 lacks a lot of specular aliasing due to material choices and a non-PBS art pipeline, MSAA works pretty well with the post-processing in HDR. It is particularly effective in this title. Next to this, you are given control over the way the above setting interacts with so-called alpha-tested transparencies, or ATOC, alpha to coverage. This has two effects in Arma 3. You see a massive reduction in the amount of aliasing on transparent edge elements like foliage, and these elements likewise have better internal sorting and more detail. It fleshes them out, makes spruces look sprucier. The so-called PPAA option then controls the type and quality for single frame post-process edge anti-aliasing. So without downsampling, this allows you to clean up internal surface aliasing like those from shadow cascades or to increase the effectiveness of MSAA gradients, making them look fuller. Now given all these options, I bet you're curious as to how Arma 3's performance profile looks given different settings. Well, before I get into that, I would like to point out some little graphical flourishes in Arma 3 that I find particularly interesting. Due to its original release date in 2013, Arma does not have a rich set of modern graphical features in comparison to other modern games. So this means it does not have state-of-the-art physically-based material simulation, any form of GPU-driven physics like particle effects or cloth deformation, nor does it have any form of localized global illumination or lots of intense filmic post-processing like per-object motion blur or bokeh depth of field. Though. Really, in spite of this, Arma 3 excels in a few categories, and hits notes in others due to its uniqueness of implementation, which deserve particular mentioning. Direct lighting shadows, for example, are uniquely implemented to Arma 3. The overworld sun casts long shadow maps across intervening terrain that are wonderfully filtered with Poisson disc shapes, giving the appearance of pinhole camera effects in the shape of the sun for small details. These shadows are then supplemented with stencil shadows on key objects like characters or vehicles to keep close detail at hand sharp and without shadow acne problems or bias problems. Though the reason Arma 3 does this is also unique to the game. Unlike many other games in the first person view, Arma 3 utilizes first and third person rigs that are merged for animations and model detail. This is seen in other games like Fear, Condemned Criminal Origins, Chronicles of Riddick, the most recent Wolfenstein, or the upcoming Squadron 42. 
This allows for uniquely detailed first-person animations that merge with the same ones other players would see in third-person, so you can have first-person player stances that are perfectly reflected in the third-person view, making multiplayer easier to balance, and just generally better looking. That is not of course to say that shadows in the game are completely without fault. The stencil shadows themselves use simplified geometry for casting and miss some elements to save on rendering time. And, as hinted earlier, extending the range of shadow cascades with the visibility option has the unwanted side effect of reducing the fidelity of nearby shadow maps, as the individual cascades are stretched over greater distances while maintaining the same chosen resolution. But even with this minor visual fault, the ability to just throw caution to the wind and ramp up visibility in distances is extremely commendable. The game just has a wonderful sense of scale at higher settings that translates incredibly as you stand atop a hill gazing across the vastness of the island. So whether at dusk or dawn, or at nighttime with forward-lit particles being shaded by muzzle flashes and conflagrations, the game just looks simply fantastic. The wonder is not just found in large scenes, as even smaller ones are highlighted by little graphical flourishes like the extensive use of parallax mapping on natural terrain surfaces. They may lack self-shadowing and higher sample counts, giving them a stepped appearance up close, but it is much preferred to a simple normal map, like are found in many games even Anno 2018. When looking at the graphical nuances of the game, the tweakable settings Arma 3 grants you can be separated into two main categories of performance. Either the graphical effect at hand and its tweaking affects the performance of your CPU, being the main culprit in limiting your frame rate, like the draw distance sliders for the most part, or the effect is wholly GPU bound as it lives entirely on the GPU, like screen space reflections. Although Arma 3 gives you the wonderful ability to tweak all these things, a lot of which is primarily just affecting your GPU as a limiting factor in performance, the real question regarding performance in the game is how much can your CPU achieve? Arma 3 is one of the most CPU bound games on PC at the moment, and it is CPU bound in a very particular manner. Arma 3 falls into that category of games whereby you are heavily limited in your frame rate potential based upon the single threaded performance of your processor. I noticed this myself particularly as I have a rather unbalanced configuration, but also a 120Hz monitor, so one of the first things I do when loading up a game is always to test how possible it is, despite the mishmash nature of my PC, to get 120Hz, and with Arma 3 it was more or less apparent right at the menu that getting 120 frames per second via CPU related variables was not going to be simple, if even possible at all. My recommendation here is to do the following. Put everything in the game at low at the start without turning off any post-processing minus SSAO as these settings in general have such a minor impact on performance. Turn off VSync and any external frame rate limiting software. This will make the game essentially fully CPU bound on any rig that has existed since 2010. At this point, these low settings should show you just how threaded Arma 3 can in fact potentially be, but this is just for the basic systems. As gameplay is concerned, you are still limited by the main thread performance. Here I recommend loading up the campaign The East Wind, as its initial sequence atop the hill both gives you a large view over the island in its full and offers a bit of AI animation and scripting into the mix, which are another point of depression for CPU performance. Let the intro scroll play out, Walk past the helicopter and make your way up to the observatory post, overlooking the valley near the sea. From here, pause the game and go into the Generals tab. Interestingly, pausing the game in Arma 3 stops all AI pathfinding, animation, and updates, and it gives you the chance to see just how much these routines sap performance. As much as I would like to say turn your graphics to this at this point, this is going to be 100% a per configuration and per user situation. My recommendation is to push out the overall view distance as far as you can from here. Much of the gameplay in Arma 3 in the form of combat takes place at great distances and also you are maximizing Arma's greatest graphical feature, its sense of scale. So push this out until you have 30 to 50% more performance on top of your target frame rate. Unpause it and see how it looks and feels. At this point then I just recommend turning everything up like crazy and overlooking the valley. In my case, I leave water reflections on standard as that extra GPU performance is best put into image quality via MSAA or image quality via oversampling. Here pay attention to the terrain setting, 
as it populates the terrain with brush and underwood, but, and more importantly, any setting above high also enables parallax mapping, a fully GPU limited feature that I definitely recommend having on at all times. Walking back down the scaffolding, you should then get on the helicopter, at which point you're going to wonder how on earth is it that Arma 3 will ever hit my desired frame rate above 30 FPS. Here tweak down the train setting again if you can, or perhaps even the object overall distance view amount. What you are witnessing though are the effects of scripting and AI activity on CPU performance. It is a separate feature from the tweakable options you are given sadly enough, and is incredibly demanding. Running through the chopper sequence should give you a good sense of any more visibility tweaks downward that you may have just to maintain your frame rate. But even then, this is mainly just AI limited performance. Getting off the helicopter, the game tasks you with driving a vehicle forward to another location. Upon entering the vehicle, if your frame rate plummets below the target refresh rate, then you now know to turn down the quality of PIP elements, or turn it off in its entirety. My ancient CPU at this point requires completely turning off PIP in order to maintain 60 FPS throughout this sequence. Following the game's main story beat, not even 5 minutes later, you are led off the path of the road and enter your first combat sequence, at which point I know at least that my CPU cannot and will not maintain a locked 60 FPS in Arma 3, as this sequence, regardless of any of my settings, drops into the 40s. This is just the nature of AI battles in the game, sequences which are seemingly fully limited by single threat performance. 60s with drops is not ideal, but this is as far as my little toaster will take me today. Armor 3 sure is a strange beast of a game. On the one hand, it offers uncompromising customization for the user, but on the other hand, the performance in the end is also kind of uncompromising. This gives the appearance that the game is somewhat underdeveloped or undercooked for modern multi-core PCs. Nonetheless, in spite of that fact, the game offers wonderful vistas and graphical options which are simply to die for. And with that being said, I would like to say thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. So thank you und auf Wiedersehen.